At nearly two and a half trillion dollars, Apple is the most expensive company in the world, but is it worth it? Apple stock has gone up 30% in the last 12 months, but is it still a buy at the current share price? To value any business, you need to make assumptions about the company's future, as well as apply your own expectations for the return that you would like to make on the investment. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my assumptions and my expectations for Apple stock and give you a valuation fitting a range of assumptions and expectations that might be more in line with your investing approach. Let's dive right into the valuation. Today, we're gonna to do a valuation of Apple stock using the margin of safety method that Phil Town detailed in his book, Rule Number One. Now, this method requires four key numbers. The current EPS, the 10-year expected growth rate, the PE in 10 years, and your desired rate of return. To value Apple, we are going to have to have a pretty good idea of the future of the business. That's why we strongly believe to invest in any company, it needs to be a business that you understand, it has to have honest and capable management, and it needs to have strong, durable competitive advantages. Apple checks all those boxes for me, so let's begin. First, we want to take a look at the trailing 12-month EPS. So we're going to head over to Morningstar and take a look at Apple's financials. We're going to scroll down and look at the EPS figure under the trailing 12-month column. Okay, there it is. It's $5.12. Now I'm gonna show you our valuation cheat sheet and enter the data we have thus far. This is where the real work begins. We need to make an educated guess on how well Apple's gonna perform over the next 10 years. To do this, I'm gonna look at the last 10 years to start to paint a picture of Apple's next 10 years of earnings growth. Of course, this is not enough. Past performance does not guarantee future results. This is just a starting off point. Whatever assumptions we make about Apple's future need to be supported with thorough research. To add narrative to any of the assumptions you make, start by reading the last 10 years of annual reports. Read and watch the interviews from the management team and listen to all the earnings calls. Okay, back to historical earnings. There are two ways to calculate the growth rate of the last 10 years of earnings of a company. There's the quick way and there's the more complete way. The quick way is using the compound annual growth rate formula you see on the screen. We like to embed the formula in our Excel spreadsheet, but you can also use an online calculator tool like this one if you prefer. For Apple, we are using $0.99 cents for the first value and $3.28 for the final value. The problem with this method is that it only looks at the earnings from 10 years ago and the earnings from today, and it ignores all other earnings results in between. So if you're going to use this method, you need to make sure that none of your earnings results that you're using are outliers because this could have a huge effect when you're calculating your growth rate. Second way, and to me, the more complete and preferred method is to calculate your growth rate by plotting the data into a chart in Excel. Let me show you what I do. First, I plot the last 10 years results, then use these numbers to create a scatter plot chart. Adding an exponential trend line, and finally, I make sure to label the trend line with the equation. The exponent of the equation is the compound growth rate of the earnings. This method uses all the data points from the last 10 years and it helps me easily see if there's any crazy outliers that might mess up my numbers. If there are, I'm gonna dig in deep to the years producing these outliers and see why I was giving such a high or low earning result. If I can understand it, I'll continue. If I can't, I put this company in the too hard pile and I move on. Just something to watch out for, this method does require that the 10 years of earnings are all positive. So if they're not, you're going to have to use another way to calculate the growth. And just a side note, in a consistent company, the results of both of these methods should be fairly similar. Apple is one of the best examples I can think of for a consistent company over the last 10 years. Its compound annual growth rate formula is giving me 14%, and the chart on Excel is giving me 12%. Now that is consistency, but remember, Past performance does not equal future results. Risks to Apple's future straight from the latest annual report include, but are not limited to, potential chip shortages, strong competitors, and the need to continually produce innovative products. This is where a good management team and some of the strongest and most durable competitive advantages in the world will protect Apple's future. From the 2020 annual report, the iPhone continues to account for more than 50% of Apple's revenue. So a belief in Apple starts with a belief in the success of the iPhone. For me, I do believe in the iPhone and I do believe in the continued consistency of Apple as a business. So I'm going to stick with 12% growth over the next 10 years. And that is the number we're going to add to our cheat sheet. Okay, we have the trailing 12 month EPS. We have our expected 10 year growth rate. Now we need to determine what the price to earnings ratio will be in 10 years for Apple. I like to head over to Seeking Alpha for this. I look at the PEs plot over time to see which were hit regularly. Looking at the last 10 years, I can see that the PE for Apple has hovered around 20 for the majority of the time, and it is only recently that it has shot up to the range of 30 or 40. 
but I don't want to assume that it will trade at such lofty valuations, so I'm going to use 20 where it has spent most of the last decade. An important historical correlation in the stock market is that PEs generally run about two times the growth rate, so the PE of 20 is looking pretty good. Okay, the last thing we need is the rate of return that we are looking for in this investment, and for me, it's 15%, and yes, I know that this is on the high side, but over the last 100 years, the S&P 500 has returned about a 10% return. So if I'm going to take on the risk of investing in an individual business, I'm expecting a higher rate of return. To review, the earnings per share we're using is $5.12. Our expected 10-year growth rate is 12%. The PE in 10 years is 20. And our desired rate of return is 15%. With these four numbers, we can do our evaluation. Let's grow our trailing 12-month EPS by 12% over the next 10 years using the future value equation to get a 10-year EPS of $15.90. We multiply the $15.90 by our 10-year price-to-earnings ratio of 20 to get a 10-year price prediction of $318. And now we bring this future price back to the current intrinsic value of the business by using the present value formula to get an intrinsic value of $78.61. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, the valuation is based on the assumptions that you make into the future of Apple, as well as what you expect to get as a return on your investment. If you are expecting that Apple will grow at 14% over the next 10 years, and you're only expecting 10% return on your investment, then Apple is actually fairly priced. But for me, I'm expecting a little bit less growth and I'm expecting a lot more out of this investment. So it's not a buy for me at the current price. We are almost done, but we don't wanna forget the most important part. We need to buy at a discount. Now, what discount you use is completely up to you, but the more uncertainty you have about the future of a business, the larger the discount needs to be. For this valuation, we are gonna apply a 10% discount to Apple, which will put the purchase price at about 70 bucks. At the time of filming this video, Apple is about $145, so it is way out of our price range, but it is a stock that we will always have our eye on. Apple is one of the world's best companies, and as such, it usually takes a market-wide event to put it on sale. Luckily for us, there are thousands of other companies out there for us to invest in, so we can wait patiently for that rare instance where Apple actually is being priced on sale. Before I forget, let me ask the question of the day. What price would you pay for Apple stock? Just a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. I am certainly not your financial advisor. So with any investing you do, please do your own research. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please let us know by hitting the like button or better yet, subscribing to our channel. If there's a company you would like us to value, please let us know by leaving it in the comments and keep an eye out for that video in the future. Please feel free to connect with us on Twitter and remember, earn more, spend less, and invest the rest. And we'll see you next time.